We did the capsule last class. This is the muscle right now. Okay? But we did not do um, extension to those, right? Uh, but before we do that, just also remember, releasing those muscles, you gotta be careful, right? Some of you guys actually got worse. This doesn't make sense, right? You should feel good, muscle relax, right? Like, uh, Bernie over there, right? Um, he, it hurts because what his SI starts hurting. It makes sense because what does, what's the job on the sacrum? Mutate or counter -nutate. It nutates the sacrum, right? So the most common problem we learned today is what? Continutation. So that muscle is trying to stop the continutation by doing what? Nutating it. And then all of a sudden you came in here and you released it. Okay? So how would we have known not to release that muscle? During my driver assessment, if I did an SI correction and the person gets a lot more, I'm like, okay, I need to make sure that I don't do anything to make this continutation worse. Okay? So I might have to release the case by a muscle first to strengthen the core muscles, right? But that's a different conversation, right? But you see how complex. This is why treating the, the lower back is so complex. Those muscles are tight for a reason. Don't go in there and start releasing everything. Okay, so we need to, um, for every stretch, right, you, uh, we, you do, in my fascia stuff, you need an HEP. So during the, the practical, I want to see a release, right? So how do you stretch the, uh, what HEP would you give them? I would do like a, the one like, uh, what, like stretch would you give them? Mm -hmm. I would do like what we learned for the scoliosis, like laying on your side. Okay, I like that one, right? Okay. So here's an example. I know this person is just flexing, right? Because remember, flexing and stretches it, right? And then the person is walking to the left. Like, yeah, can you kill the lights. I feel like you guys can't see it. Thank you, Bernie. There you go. Okay. So when you flex over the ball, what are you doing? You're stretching it, okay? Now, the, the most classic lower back stretch is the, the knee to chest one, right? That's like garbage, right? Just, when, you, when you do this, right? No. Is the lower back really stretching? No. no. This only really works if your hips are so tight that when you do this, the lower back goes. Right? And we keep learning how common pinching in the front is, right? So that's why I'm not a big fan of those classic ones. If you are going to do something like that, if you want to practice this later, right? You put a, a, a fulcrum on the sacrum. What that does, it throws into a posterior pelvic tilt, right? And then now you're doing a lower back stretch. And then I tell patients to wipe the tail to get side bending. Side bending. Yeah. Oh, so you could do it the same, like, the, like quadruped, but doing like side Yeah, quadruped side. works well, too, so, okay? Now this is not um, clinet too, so I'll let you guys figure out which one you want to do. This is called a pelvic salsa one, right? <laughs> so essentially, first is in a, in a, a semi-squat, and you learn to do this, right? <laughs> What's this? Side bending, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But, you know, it's not really a salsa for those who know it. It's more of a merengue. you do this. <laughs> salsa, you do more like this. Oh. So, I don't want to tell Diane during the course, I said, listen, you guys are all wrong, and you're welcome to change it, but... <laughs> And what's the difference between this and, and this? Is that these are what passive, mm -hmm. like gravity do all the work, which is fine. But these are more active, which is the ultimate goal, right? Can you let go of that muscle while mm -hmm. all the muscles are working? Okay, because you doing your stretch is not gonna last forever. Okay, and every time you give somebody a stretch, I always tell a person do a before test. So you guys see it, do before test all the time. And before we go over here, how far can you go? Do your stretch, should go more. If it doesn't go more, do a stretch longer, right? So if I was treating Mena, I said, hey, do your nerve flossing, but before you do that, bend forward first, do this a bunch of times, 30 times, do it again, no improvement, do another 30 times, until you see at least a 50% increase, okay? By you doing that, the patients will do what? Actually do the homework, right? Because they actually see it working. Okay, so it's a key thing to do the before and after test is because you have to be very confident that it will work. That's why in clinic, we do our pre-test and post-test and give them the intervention. 
All right, so that's that one. We're gonna keep on going back to this technique. We have to learn how to release the, the piriformis muscles, like the coccygeus, we're gonna have that at the sake of today, right? So we need to finish with extension, okay? So who here has limited extension? Everybody bend backwards. Huh? Um, who here has limited extension? Christina. Huh? Christine Lee. Uh, huh? uh, actually, Christine Lee. She has the one that you have pain coming up, right? All right, so we'll use you. Okay, come on up.